Hey guys, Colleen here. Um, so we are nearing the end of 2023, which is wild to me. Um, it's been another great year of fixing really cool amps. For the last video of 2023, not this video, I'm gonna be doing one more. Um, I wanna make it a little like question and answer video. So in this video, leave your comments um, with a question for me. It can be literally anything. Really excited to connect with you guys that way. For this video, I was working on an amp a while ago and it had some bubble bee capacitors in it. And I was thinking about how similar they look to carbon comp resistors, which was the last um, Amp Electronics 101 video. So I thought I'd touch upon bubble bee caps for this one. So first of all, capacitors. Um, I just want to touch upon capacitors in general really quick. There are many different types of capacitors for different applications. Capacitors store electrical energy. They basically consist of two plates that are conductive and they're separated by an insulator of some sort. The capacitance of a capacitor refers to how much electrical energy the capacitor can store. These are based on factors such as the surface area of the plates, how far apart the plates are, stuff like that. So when a capacitor is connected in circuit to a power supply, the two plates accumulate opposite charges, which creates an electrical field. So like I said, there are different capacitors used for different applications. There are capacitors that are polarized, meaning one end is positive, one end is negative. And there are capacitors that are nonpolar. Um, the bumblebee caps that we are going to be talking about are nonpolar, uh, meaning you can hook them up either way in a circuit and they'll still operate the same. So bumblebee caps are not the real name of these capacitors, it's kind of street term for them, um, but they're a type of black beauty cap and black beauty capacitors were made by Sprague. So let's talk a little bit about Sprague. Sprague still makes capacitors today, and I'm sure that any old electronic that you open up um, that was made in the U.S. probably has Sprague capacitors in there, um, either for the filter caps, the coupling caps, you know, um, Sprague was kind of the deal. Sprague was founded in the year 1926 by Robert C. Sprague. He resided in Quincy, Massachusetts. And he actually started the business out of his home, as many of us start our businesses. Um, over time, the business grew exponentially. Sprague was known for creating a lot of military spec components, um, especially during World War II. Um, they kind of became more focused on manufacturing components for the war. After World War II, they started focusing more on producing components for TV and radio. They had such a great reputation for their high quality components during, their, during the 40s that um, companies really told people, you know, replace your caps with spray caps, bumblebee caps. Um, they are seen a lot in Gibson guitars from the 50s. Um, they're seen in a lot of amps too. Well, Gibson definitely used a lot of bumblebee caps during that time. The early bumblebee black beauty caps were paper and oil and foil capacitors um, with a bakelite body. And that was pretty much during the 50s. In the late 50s, the early mylar bumblebee slash black beauty caps were starting to be produced and mylar was a way more durable material um, a lot of the paper and oil caps drift they start leaking um, a lot of the times i see bumblebee caps and i do have to replace them because they're starting to leak dc voltage where they shouldn't so late 50s they evolved to using mylar and then into the 60s, the Black Beauty caps were Mylar capacitors um, without the stripes. Um, and Sprague just printed the value of the capacitors on there instead of using the stripe color code. Because it can be a little confusing sometimes. Essentially, it is the same color code as resistors. So, um, like I said earlier, when I do come across a Black Beauty cap, of course I want to leave it in. But I have to check if it's leaking DC voltage. Um, if the cap is within specifications, otherwise I will have to replace them, unfortunately. 
Um, these caps are really, really sought after. And there's so many videos out there comparing um, black beauty caps with modern capacitors. Some people are like, there's no difference. Some people are like, yes, there is a huge difference. Um, comment below and let me know what you think. It would be cool one day for myself to make one of those videos for you guys. Um, essentially, I think, you know, a lot of it is all relative to your ear. So I have a capacitor here. It is not good anymore. It's leaking tons of DC. So I'm not just going to cut open a random good one because these ain't cheap. And I kind of want to just open it up and see what it's looking like inside. So uh, Mikey. <laughs> Mikey, you have some good control with that thing. Cool. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this little informative video about bumblebee caps. Um, Leave your questions in the comments here, and I am excited to have a little personalized video for you guys for the end of the year. And I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, DistroKid. Um, DistroKid is a service that helps musicians upload their music to all major streaming platforms, and musicians get to keep 100% of the royalties. We love musician-friendly services. Viewers on my channel get 30% off at the link I will post down below. It's distrokid.com slash VIP slash Fazio. So go check it out and get your music uploaded. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time.